The Elmo Labs EVC2 SX is the latest addition in the Elmo Labs EVC2 product line. The Elmo Labs EVC2 enables digital or analog voltage control using I2C, SM bus, and PM bus. The device also has UART and SPI functionality. It can be considered the foundation for the Elmo Labs ecosystem as you can expand the functionality of some other Elmo Labs products by connecting it to an EVC2. In this case, we're interested in the three VMOD headers that provide digital voltage sense and feedback adjustment capabilities for analog VRM controllers. It works using an onboard current DAC that can source or sync current into the circuit. For a detailed overview, you can refer to the tutorial on Elmo Labs forum. Please note that different versions of the EVC2 are using slightly different configurations for the onboard current DAC. I'll try to keep the step-by-step -step explanation as practical as possible for this video. Step one, identify the voltage controllers you want to control with the EVC2SX. On this particular graphics card, we will do two hardware modifications. The first modification is for the GPU voltage controller, and this will help address the power and voltage limitations. The second modification is for the memory voltage controller. First up, the GPU voltage controller. We identified the UPI Semiconductor UP9024Q as the GPU voltage controller. Unfortunately, we can't find the datasheet of the voltage controller with a quick Google search. However, there are other ways. Sometimes vendors like UPI would repurpose existing designs with minor modifications or improvements. Since we are not looking for the exact specification, but only need the pinout, we can try to go to the UPI website and look for an equivalent part. Under the DC-DC buck controller, multiple phase buck controller, we can apply the following filter. That leaves us with two options, the more advanced UP9529 and the less advanced UP1666. We can now check if either solution matches the chip on our graphics card. Checking this requires a little bit of educated guesswork. We can open the data sheets of the two controllers and see if the pinout differs. For example, we find that the feedback return pin location is different. Feedback return should connect directly to ground and we can quickly check if that's the case. Checking eliminates the UP9529 that leaves UP1666. We can do additional checks to confirm our suspicion further that our chip is similar to this controller. For example, we can check if phase one pin 20 or phase two, pin 16, connects to the nearby inductor. Additionally, we can verify if PVCC pin 18 connects to a nearby larger capacitor. Although there's not really a good way to know for sure we have the correct part, we can take a calculated risk and use this data sheet as the basis for our hardware modifications. We identified the UPI semiconductor UP1540P as memory voltage controller. Fortunately, the datasheet is readily available on the UPI Semi website. Step two, determine how the hardware modifications will work. Our goal is to manually increase the voltage output. In the datasheet, we find a typical application circuit where we can trace back V out to U gate one and L gate one. The upper gate, U gate, and lower gate, L gate, connect to the high side and low side MOSFET. To keep it simple, the MOSFET is a transistor controlled by the gate signal that will switch on and off. In this case, the high side connects to 12 volt and the low side would connect to ground, so zero volt. The MOSFETs output this 12 volt and zero volt through an output filter, which averages out these voltages to provide a smooth voltage output. For example, if the high side is switched on 10% of the time and the low side is switched on 90% of the time, the average voltage output is then 12 volt times 10% plus zero volt times 90% equaling 1.2 volt. The voltage controller can control the output voltage by sending more or fewer signals via the upper gate or lower gate. An increase in signals through the U gate tells the MOSFET to switch on the high side more often, increasing the output voltage. In the functional block diagram, we find that the difference between the reference input voltage, ref in, and feedback voltage, FB, drives the gate control logic. Essentially, the voltage controller aims to have the reference input equal to the sensed output voltage. If the reference input voltage is higher than the feedback voltage, 
the voltage controller will try to increase the output voltage. If the reference input voltage is lower than the feedback voltage, then the voltage controller will try to decrease the output voltage. That offers us two ways to control the output voltage, adjust the ref in or adjust the FP. In a typical voltage controller, the ref in is an internal non-adjustable voltage. The voltage output connects to the feedback input pin with two resistors, one between V out and feedback and one between feedback and ground. These two resistors serve as voltage dividers. For example, if the reference input voltage is fixed to 0.8 volt and the feedback resistors divide the output voltage by two, the output voltage is 1.6 volt. If we double the resistance between voltage out and feedback, the voltage controller would have a feedback input of 1.6 volt divided by four or 0.4 volt. The voltage controller will increase the output voltage since the reference input voltage is 0.8 volt and thus higher than the feedback input voltage. However, that's not how it works with this controller. As we can see from the typical application circuit, the feedback circuit is used for voltage sense rather than voltage divider. So that leaves us with the ref in voltage to control the voltage output. Under functional description, we find a more detailed overview of the voltage control loop. The figure shows that V ref, ref adjust and VID control ref in. In short, a boot voltage is set from the two volt reference voltage. This voltage can dynamically be adjusted by a ref adjust output, which is determined in this case by the VID. The VID is of course controlled by our GPU and its GPU boost algorithm. So what are our options to manually adjust the reference input voltage? Let's check Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. We can replace any of the four aforementioned resistors with a different resistor. Reducing the resistance of R2 or R3 would increase the ref in, whereas lowering the resistance of R4 or R5 would decrease the ref in. Instead of replacing the resistors, we can add a variable resistor in parallel with any of the four mentioned resistors, which will effectively decrease the resistance of that resistor. That is the typical approach for hardware modifications, as we can use a variable resistor to change the voltage on the fly. We can inject a current at the ref in point, which increases the voltage to ref in. With the Alma Labs EVC2SX, we go for that third option as we try to alter the current in the circuit to change the reference input voltage. In addition, we also remove the resistor connecting ref adjust and the GPU VID from interfering in the circuit. To achieve stability at higher frequencies, we need a very low VID, around 0.7 volt, to stay below the power limit. But at the same time, we need a voltage higher than Vmax, about 1.2 volt, to be stable. In other words, we need a voltage offset of around 500 millivolt. If we use this kind of an offset, two things will happen. One, the boot voltage may be way too high. And two, there might be sudden spikes of voltage when the GPU boost algorithm find there's enough voltage headroom for the highest VF point, which would result in the 500 millivolt offset applied to a 1.1 volt VID, so resulting in 1.6 volt effectively. By eliminating the VID from the equation, we make sure that there's just one fixed voltage going into the GPU. Let's summarize what we talked about so far. Our goal is to manually control the output voltage of the GPU voltage controller because A, we want to exceed the VMAX limitation imposed by NVIDIA, and B, we want to keep the VID as low as possible to avoid triggering the power consumption limiter. The GPU voltage controller determines the appropriate voltage based on two inputs, a reference input voltage and a feedback input voltage. The reference input voltage is based on a boot voltage derived from a 2 volt reference voltage and any dynamic reference adjustment output. The reference adjustment is controlled by the GPU directly by issuing VID requests based on the GPU's voltage frequency curve and the GPU boost algorithm. The refin FB comparison output serves as an input for the gate logic that controls the upper gate driver and the lower gate driver. The U-gate signal controls the high side MOSFET connected to 12 volt. The L-gate signal controls the low side MOSFET connected to 0 volt. The MOSFET is a transistor that switches on and off. 
the MOSFET output goes through an output filter to provide a stable voltage to the GPU. If the GPU boost algorithm finds sufficient headroom to increase the voltage, it increases the VID. This VID request goes via the ref adjust and increases the ref in. The increased ref in compared to the unchanged feedback will make the voltage controller keep the upper gate signal enabled for longer. The high side MOSFET connected to 12 volt will thus stay enabled for longer, which increases the output filter's average voltage. That in turn increases the output voltage to the GPU. This process happens a couple of hundred times per second. To achieve our goal, we make the following hardware modifications. We remove the resistor between ref in and ref adjust to prevent the GPU VID from influencing the voltage output. We add current into the circuit connecting VREF and ref in. The increased current and unchanged resistance increases the voltage to ref in. We identify the UPI semiconductor UP1540P as memory voltage controller. In the datasheet, we find a typical application circuit and see that we can trace back the voltage output to UG and LG. The upper gate driver output and lower gate driver output connect to the high side and low side MOSFETs. We discussed how that works earlier in the video. Furthermore, we can also see a feedback loop from the voltage output back to the voltage controller via feedback. In the functional block diagram, we find that the gate control logic is driven by comparing the feedback input voltage and offset voltage. The feedback pin feeds back the output voltage V out into the controller. The offset pin can be used to set a voltage offset by connecting it via a resistor to the 0.8 volt voltage output. So what are our options to manually control the memory voltage? Let's check again with Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. We can replace the resistor connecting V out and feedback with a higher value. That will result in a lower voltage reported to the feedback pin and, as a consequence, the voltage controller will try to increase the voltage output. Alternatively, we can replace the resistor connecting feedback and ground with a lower value. That will also result in a lower voltage reported to the feedback pin and, as a consequence, the voltage controller will try to increase the voltage output. We can source a current on the offset pin. As a result, the voltage controller will try to increase the output voltage. We can place a resistor between offset and ref out to control the offset voltage scale. We can sync a current on the feedback pin. That will reduce the voltage on the feedback pin and as a consequence, the voltage controller will try to increase the voltage output. With the Elma Labs EVC2SX, we go again for that last option as we want to alter the current in the circuit to change the feedback input voltage. Step three, find the headers near the VMOD1 marking on the EVC2SX PCB. On the EVC2SX, there are seven pins, one for ground and three sets of two pins for a specific controller. The two pins have two purposes. One pin is used for voltage measurement and the other pin is used for voltage adjustments. Step four, connect the various pins to the relevant points on your graphics card. In my case, I connect the pins from left to right as follows. Pin one for any ground of the graphics card, pin two as a current source for the GPU voltage circuit, pin three voltage measurement point for the GPU voltage, pin four the current sink for the memory voltage circuit, and pin 5, the voltage measurement for the memory voltage. Step 5, open the Elmo Labs EVC2 software for voltage monitoring and control. You can find the relevant controls under the DAC1 submenu. Here you will find VN1, VN2, and VN3. If your voltage measurement point is correctly connected, you should immediately see the voltage monitoring. By using the drop down menu options, you can adjust the number of microamps sunk or sourced from the connected voltage controller. As I explained in the previous segments, we are sourcing current on the ref in pin for the GPU voltage hardware modification. That means we can increase the voltage by using positive values. Conversely, we are sinking current on the feedback pin for the memory voltage hardware modification. That means we can increase the voltage by using negative values. Please be aware that any changes in these drop down menus can potentially damage and destroy your hardware. So please be very careful. I suggest that you take the following precautions. One, every time you want to adjust the voltage, always start with the smallest step up or down. 
That allows you to double check if the voltage monitoring works correctly and confirm the step size of the voltage adjustment. Two, increase the voltage step by step to ensure the voltage increases as you expect. While the EVC2SX provides a great function, it does not offer fine grain voltage control. So the step size might not always be ideal. In my case, I saw a 100 millivolt step increase in GP voltage. 